everything in the safe house. Whip it up in the safe house. I I have a whole collection of Goyard. I have like probably like 16 bags. 458. Damn. Nigga still in my style. Can I get my flow back? Yeah, I got a mixtape before that called the um, Real Uzi. You can get that on that too. I said 5 to a 10. I said 20 to a 50. Pockets be my nervous. Your bitch in the whip. You're the one with the curtains. I'm sucking a titty. That bitch should be nursing. It's only my third day out here. I don't Damn. know. Yeah, I'm sipping all on the fight. Got your bitch all on my dick. On the block with all my chains on. How did you come up with that name, Uzi? Mr. Little Uzi Vert angered the Heaven's Gate cult. Welcome to Eternal Uzi, not again. I walk around, get your side track. Walking around with them thigh packs. Marnie on Marnie, bitch, I can get nerdy. Pink diamonds on me, they look just like garbage. I say, hey, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. How you doing? I done fucked your bitch and her best friend in front of her. I won't fuck you, bitch. No, I didn't even get it. I'm a P from motherfucking AT double hockey stick. <laughs> The Philly born rapper Lucifer, I mean Lil Uzi Vert's musical career, you can say began when he was in 10th grade, when one of his friends was releasing music that was popping amongst a school, and that boy Uzi said, nah bruh. I'm jealous fam. So he decided to make his own music. But to be honest, around this time, nothing really significant took place musically, other than this one music video he was featured in with this clique he was associated with called Steak Town, which Uzi left when he was 17. Yo, I'm sure a lot of people saw that and was like, damn, he gonna be the hottest in the game one day. Yeah, I doubt it, but we all gotta start from somewhere, right? Uzi's first song that he ever dropped was a freestyle on SoundCloud called In The Field. That beat was actually used first by that boy Big Soldier, Young Draco, a few months before that in a song called I'm Swaggin'. Swag. Now keep in mind that isn't the first Uzi song ever made, but it's the oldest song by him that we have available to us, which was January of 2014. A month later, Uzi would drop his first project called Purple Thoughts Volume 1, which honestly doesn't really sound that different from the Uzi that we have today. Cartel, 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 cartel. On top of me, jocking me, sucking me properly, actually sucking me sloppily. Bitch, get off my dick again. Cause I'm making all this money. And this shit ain't nothing. No. You the type of nigga that probably tip a cop off. Miami nice, and I'm rotting with the top off. Alright, I'm lying. It definitely sounds different. It's still hard though. Usually a lot of rappers' first mixtapes be straight booty cheeks, bruh. Doodle meat. But this actually sounds tough. How did you come up with that name, Uzi? Alright, well my name, first of all, it was vert, and that's short for vertical. Okay. And vertical jump is straight to the top, so I'm going straight to the top. But one day I was rapping, I was in my hood rapping, and some old head was like, damn, you rap, you rapping fast, you rap like a machine, you ain't rapping like a Uzi. Like a Uzi. Like a Uzi. Like a Uzi. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Like I said, that's, like I said that's, a comp, that's a confident name right there. Like you said, you can spit fast and anything. Yo, why Uzi's head looks so big on his body though, bro? <laughs> Look like he used a cheat code from NFL Blitz or something. <laughs> nah, that's my guy. Not too long after that mixtape though, thanks to DJ Diamond Cuts playing his music all over Philly radio, it caught the attention of Don Cannon and DJ Drama as they took him under their wing as their protege. In August of that year, Uzi would release his second project, The Real Uzi. Look what the fuck you to start. Got your bitch on me, she wanna go. 
Moving on to January of 2015, DJ Carnage would release the song What Do You Want with Uzi, Rich the Kid, and ASAP Ferg. This would be Uzi's first breakthrough hit, and it may not have been a commercial success, but it definitely blew him up in the underground scene, as it did millions on millions of streams on YouTube and SoundCloud. Let a nigga know. In August of that year, he was actually a special guest on Fall Out Boy and Wiz Khalifa's Boys of Summer tour. A few months later, he would drop what a lot of day one Uzi fans would consider to be one of his best projects, Love Is Rage. First I drop my top, hey, then I swear my cold, hey, like oh god damn, that's the bitch that I want. Classics, bro. This project will be very important in his success as we started to see his name pop up more in the mainstream over the next few months. But only a day later, Young Thug would drop Slime Season 2. And admittingly, this is when I personally discovered Uzi on the song Big Racks. And I was like, damn, who is this guy? Yeah, no, I'm not joking, but I didn't go. go. Down in the like a bull. It wasn't that long of a verse or anything, but it put thousands of eyes onto Uzi, as it did for me, and I started checking out all of his music. <laughs> Twenty sixteen is the year that many people from the new generation would consider the year to be their favorite year of Uzi. Hell, even just rap in general and how fun that summer was. But that's kinda besides the point. In April of that year, Uzi would drop one of my favorite projects, Lil Uzi Vert vs the World, which to me is a classic, bruh and literally has no skips. It's a tape that features some of Uzi's biggest hits too, such as Money Longer, You Was Right, and P's and Q's. It's still important to mention though that despite Uzi being white hot at this point, he still didn't have a mainstream single in terms of the charts. Not until he was featured on Wiz Khalifa's song Pull Up, which ended up going gold that summer. And just a month after this, Uzi would be announced as a double XL freshman. And the fact that, look, you gotta remember that back then, that freshman list caused so much controversy, bro, within the hip hop community, as it had old school hip hop fans trashing it like crazy, while the newer generation was praising it like crazy, as this new wave of hip hop just came swarming in. And still to this day, I believe it's the most viewed cipher out of any of the double XL freshman ciphers. Hey, tell that little bitch it's nothing. Hey, hit that bit right from the back. She got turkey. I knock out that bit like it's stuff. Okay. This list helped Uzi's buzz skyrocket even more as Money Longer entered in the Billboard Hot 100 in July of that year. And man, do I miss these times, bro. I remember when Uzi posted this snippet on his Instagram. Yo, I literally remember playing that snippet over and over again, bro, until Uzi finally dropped his project, The Perfect Love Tape, two weeks later, with many fans considering it to be one of his weaker projects, which I can kind of agree with, but at the time, this, Famous Dex and Lil Yachty was like all I was bumping, bro, <laughs> for real. That ain't no Rolly, bitches, is a Frank Mueller, yeah, Frank Mueller, hi headers, yeah. this is my world, so it's all in my favor. Moving on to October of that year, Uzi would be featured on the smash hit that went four times platinum, Bad and Bougie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Back to the bone, and man, what else can I really say about this one? This song would literally introduce millions of casual rap fans onto Uzi, as not only did it skyrocket the Migos, but it helped Uzi rise even more, especially when so many people were talking about whether the verse was trash or not. Later on in November, on my birthday actually, Uzi would drop a tape with Gucci called 1017 vs. The World, and in my opinion, it could have been a dope little mixtape, if Gucci wasn't on it, he single-handedly ruined it for me. Because honestly, it does have some underrated bangers on it, bro. Until Gucci's part comes on, of course. Had to slam my door, Mr. Mr. Yellow and White Gold. Diamonds on my choker, diamonds on my necklace, yeah. Huh? Driving in the lamb, but I'ma get the right, yeah. In February of 2017, Uzi would drop a little EP out of nowhere called Love Is Rage 1.5, which included the soon-to-be hit that will change Uzi forever, EXO Tour Life. Push me to the edge, all my friends are dead, 
Push me to the edge So much water on my neck My needle go to some so. I don't go nowhere without my ruler DP on the ruler. Yeah, yeah. ruler The song EXO Tour Life was undeniably a hit And ended up peaking at number 7 on the Billboard 100 And go platinum 6 times over And finally thrusted Uzi to the top of the new wave And after months and months of anticipation and teasing Uzi finally released his debut album, Love Is Rage 2, selling 135 copies first week, and ended up spawning two more hits, The Way Life Goes and Sauce It Up. I know it hurts sometimes, but you'll get over it. Honestly, I love most of the songs on the tape, but my favorite probably has to go to 20 minutes. The instrumental on that is just, I don't know, it just makes me levitate or some shit. In terms of 2018, Uzi didn't really drop anything other than being featured on other people's songs, especially this 2018 summer banger. Took your girl and I'm, score like I made the touchdown. I'm lying though, he did drop these two snippets for his next album. Before we get into Eternal A Take dropping though, I gotta talk about the original album cover. If you guys aren't familiar with Heaven's Gate, there were this UFO religious cult based near San Diego, California, and what happened with them is pretty creepy, so you can just google that for yourself, buddy. But yeah, Uzi decided to make his album cover look just like the Heaven's Gate logo without their permission. And well, the two surviving members of the cult was gonna take legal action against Uzi if he didn't change it, which he eventually did. But boy oh boy was the road to Eternal A Take a long drive dragged out bumpy road bruh there were all kinds of label issues he was going through beefing with dj drama and whatnot all the way back in january of 2018 uzi tweeted these things fast forward to march of 2019 he ends up dropping the song free uzi out of nowhere she was tripping had the axe of what take i can make your little just want to percolate which i thought was all right he then ends up signing with rock nation for management then two days later he ends up renegotiating his label contract and ends up releasing two more tracks that's a rack and sanguine paradise from the back, hit her once, that's a rap Bro, honestly, those songs are amazing, and they were both my jams in the summer of 2019. But hold up, in May of that year, at Rolling Loud, this boy Uzi talking about, Man, last night I just dropped my album, or some shit like that. Oh, no, no, he was like, Last night I just finished the last song of my album. Yeah! Okay, bye. Alright, fuck all that. Okay. The other night, uh -huh. I finished the last song to the album. Really? It's lit. I said y'all ready for my album? Yes, boy. Where's that? Okay, bye. Boy. Everybody was expecting him to drop it around the spring of 2019. Yeah. Uh, you alive. But of course, you know, not everything happens the way you want it to. But fast forward to the end of 2019, we got our hopes up, bruh, when Uzi dropped Futsal Shuffle, peaking at number five on the Billboard charts. Whoa. And that's when I knew like, okay, now we really about to get the ball rolling on this tape. In February of 2020, this boy Uzi said on live, Eternal will take in two weeks. Yeah, okay, I did not believe it for one bit. You know how many times he said that, or said Eternal will take is not even dropping? So I honestly didn't really believe it. But then two days later, he dropped one of my favorite Uzi songs, I don't care bruh, the song That Way. You know, Uzi was talking about he want to treat 2020 like 2016, so I felt like that way definitely gave me those vibes for sure. And then two days later, Uzi dropped this on his channel, so you know it's real. And what was cool was that Uzi was letting the fans choose which album cover to choose from, and it ended up being this one. On March 6, 2020, Eternal Take finally arrived, bruh. I came in with a new 40 clock. Fuck on your bitch, make that whole one a milli run. She got me acting all sad, damn. So a lot of positive reviews, selling 288,000 copies first week and earning the number one spot on the Billboard Hot 100. It stayed at number one for another week, selling another 247,000 copies. The reason for that though is because he decided to drop a whole nother mixtape, attaching it to Eternal Take, calling it a deluxe, which was titled Lil Uzi Vert vs. The World 2. Oh, you scared, huh? 
Oh, you puss. I'ma make sure they remember me, cause I walk around without an enemy. He say that he tough, then that boy gotta show me. In my opinion, though, if Uzi would have just held on to Lil Uzi Vert vs. The World 2 and waited to drop that as if it was its own separate tape months or even a year down the line, I feel like people would praise it a lot more and not just look at it as EA's deluxe. You feel me? It honestly deserves to be a standalone piece of art to me, not attached to EA, but hey, that's just me. Eternal Take and the Deluxe are both fire and are both at the top of my list of Uzi projects. What's mad funny though is that we know him and Rich the Kid have been beefing for a while or whatever, right? So this guy Uzi really decided to drop his Deluxe tape the same day as Rich the Kid's Boss Man tape. Knowing damn well no one listening to that shit, bro. <laughs> also, I know this is randomly placed in the video, but it's important to note that Uzi is heavily inspired by Marilyn Manson, which has always made people speculate whether Uzi is a devil worshiper or not, because Marilyn is like the biggest Satanist there is. That's really up to you to decide though, but with all his satanic imagery and shit, I don't know, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm just here for the music, fam. Oh. 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 If it's just so clean that they like Yeah, it's your boy Lil Uzi. I just dropped the pink tape. <laughs> yeah, I just dropped the pink tape. Um it's pretty cool. You know, some people may not like the rock songs, but shit. I try to be different. You know I'm from Philly, so you know how you know how we do it. I'm Philly, you know, you know I'm Philly we we, um, you know, I'm like four feet, but you know, when I stand on a pink tape, huh, yeah, I'm like, you know, like 10 feet tall, but, um, hey, yo, Aaron, where did we leave off? All right, so we last left off the pandemic. Oh man, the pandemic. I can't believe it's been this long since, bro. It definitely feels like a long time ago, but low key, it kind of wasn't. I last left off right when the world turned into the apocalypse and everything changed. Right when EA dropped too. The year of COVID. Man, how things were different. Everyone was rocking masks, riots everywhere. And what really sucked was that there was no shows, bruh. We truly missed out on what could have been an amazing tour. Imagine an Eternal Take tour. Like, bro, I feel like we got robbed. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people would have looked at EA differently. Kind of like how Whole Lotta Red's whole perception shifted to like GOAT status once he gave us the VAM tour and the whole aesthetic change. So we truly missed out for sure and people would have appreciated EA more, at least in my opinion. But now that it's been a few years since and we've fully digested it, I can truly say that that project EA is pretty legendary. And speaking of EA, Uzi gave his opinions on it about a year later saying this. All of my music for Eternal Take got leaked, so I had to redo it. It didn't reach its full potential, I just knew it wasn't the sound I was going for. Let's just say Eternal Take for another artist would have been really good because it was super dumbed down to where everyone could enjoy it, but that's not my artistry. The music is tolerable, but honestly from Lil Uzi Vert, we expecting a fucking star, moon, spaceships, and the high above. We expect everything from him because I'm already giving off this persona. I have a fucking pink diamond in the middle of my head, Joe. Everything is supposed to be going fucking diamond. I want my new music to be more intimate to my real fans. I wanted it to be almost cult-like. So clearly Uzi isn't fully satisfied with his work when it comes to EA, but I don't know. You guys let me know how you feel about that project. I'm not gonna lie, the leaks did affect the project, I'm sure. And who knows how it would have sounded, but yeah, I think it's really good. I got me the vinyl for both of them too. In one, it's wild. It was like 50 bucks. But anyways, 2020 was an interesting year for Uzi. Especially when he dropped that Sasuke track, a lot of people didn't like this song, but I thought it was okay. And out of nowhere, in July of 2020, we started getting teased with a collab project with Future. And when I saw this, I was like, Give me a hell yeah if you're down with Pluto, baby Pluto. What? Oh, hell yeah. 
because at this point we already had some dope collabs between the two. Matter of fact, I'm gonna let my boy Chef03, which you should subscribe to by the way, give his take on this whole album. Hey, it's Chef03, and I wanted to start by thanking It's Aaron Speaking for having me as a guest on this video. I'm a fan of his channel, so this is pretty cool, and hopefully this segment will give you a preview of what my content is like as well. Both Lil Uzi Vert and Future cleared their Instagram pages on July 21st, 2020 and proceeded to upload a visual teaser to YouTube to announce an upcoming project titled Pluto and Baby Pluto. Then on Uzi's 26th birthday, July 31st, 2020, the duo released two joint songs titled Paddock and Over Your Head. Initially, neither of these tracks were included on the album's release, but they were later tied in with the deluxe edition. But we'll get to that later. Then, on September 22nd, we got another teaser for the project, when a video featuring the two rappers playing soccer with several women was uploaded. Then on November 11th, both artists officially announced the joint project on their social media, with another launch video. It showed the two rappers discussing if they should leave Earth for another planet. We're over. We gotta go to another planet. The next day, on November 12th, the cover art and track list were revealed, tying in the theme of outer space for the album. Then the next day, on the 13th, Lil Uzi Vert, aka Baby Pluto, and Future, aka Pluto, released the 16-track collaborative album titled Pluto and Baby Pluto. They didn't waste any time when it came to releasing the deluxe version of the album, because they put it out on November 17th, just four days after the initial release. This project felt like a victory lap for the two artists who had both released albums earlier in 2020. It was fun, lighthearted, and had some absolute bangers on it, with my personal favorites being Marnie on Me, Million Dollar Play, Baby Sasuke, because I like Naruto, and Heart in Pieces. However, that's not to say that the album didn't have its shortcomings. I really enjoy music from both Uzi and Future, so I was pumped for this album. But I believe the main issue with this album came from both of their styles being so similar that they almost started to cancel each other out with their lack of contrast. A great collab project for me is similar to The Perfect Snack, two awesome flavors that aren't the same taste profile, but when they're combined, they make the perfect harmony, like the sweet and salty pairing of caramel and sea salt or having a cool glass of milk to go with your chocolate chip cookies. When listening the full way through this project, especially with the deluxe, it feels like you're just eating a pile of chocolate chip cookies that taste delicious, but even just a sip of milk, or in this case, contrast to the melodic wrapping with a little stylistic separation, would make the experience much more enjoyable. But regardless, the album was a hit and peaked at the number two spot on the US Billboard 200 chart. Even though the project can come across as one-dimensional at certain times, I think we're very fortunate to get a full-length album with both legends, Future and Lil Uzi Vert, or Pluto and Baby Pluto. You already know, fam. I do gotta say, I don't know. Low-key, I feel him on the contrast thing with Uzi and Future, but to me, that tape only got like maybe three to four skips. That whole entire collab with the deluxe and all that is probably my favorite collab tape of all time, really. Like when they drop those singles, Paddock and Over Your Head, Paddock is super underrated to me, fam. But to me, the best song and yo, bruh, this is probably the most underrated Uzi slash future song, and that's Moment of Clarity. Moment of Clarity, I'm scared off the yacht. Up on my curves, I'm taking your spot. Bruh, the beat alongside the melody and extremely catchy hook by Future and the performances from both of them is just top tier. The album spawned two hits after it was released with Drankin' and Smokin' and that's it. That's it? Yo, Future with his veins coming out on the side, like you could just feel the passion, bro. <laughs> like, that's it is a way better track than drinking and smoking to me, but you know, that's all opinion. But um, yeah, Baby Sasuke, TikTok, like there's just way too many good songs on here. Baby Sasuke, yeah, not nah, nah, yeah. I'm trying to crit net neck on her bit neck. My nigga selling crit neck for the stick neck. Oh yeah, and because of you, that's an amazing track. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
And towards the end of the year, Uzi would be featured on a song from a buzzing new rapper from Philly who goes by the name Pop Hunter. I'm off at Eddie, I'm up, I don't got no time to relate. He actually had like five songs already done according to him, but something would pop up online that would make Uzi want his feature to be completely taken off. So Pop Hunter's song Adderall Corvette Corvette really started taking off on TikTok. And then just a month later, Uzi would hop on the remix on a free feature just to show love to a fellow Philly artist. But this would pretty much be the last time we hear about him. He ended up dropping a mixtape on Christmas of 2020 with another song featuring Uzi called Takeoff. But literally just days after this was released, some paperwork with the police surfaced online showing that when Pop Hunter was just 14 years old, he witnessed a murder and he fully cooperated with the police and told them everything that he knew. I mean, technically, by definition, yeah, he snitched. But I mean, he saw someone die right in front of him. At 14 years old bro but in the rap game i guess at any age it's just not acceptable at all the number one thing in hip-hop that you don't want to be known as is a rat and these papers would get all over the internet and everyone would just associate him with being a snitch and this is when uzi decided that he allegedly no longer wanted to be associated with him there was a DM that went around that looked pretty convincing. As Uzi was saying, the DM saying, Little bro, you gotta take me off your EP. I can't accept what you did. Come on, big bro. Everybody's starting to hate me because I was being loyal. I did what I had to do. I can't even get features from no more other artists because of this. And Uzi finished with, Sorry, little bro. I just can't respect what you did. And then also in the screenshot on his Instagram story, it shows that Pop wrote, I'm about to just quit rapping. All that other paperwork just fucked my whole reputation up. So when I saw this and including a bunch of people on the internet i mean i pretty much believed it it looks pretty real he told academics in their interview that this was completely fake and he even showed him dms and saying that that never happened and uzi never said that but there was also a tweet from uzi that would quickly be deleted saying need my verse back fuck that song real street dudes stick to the code the corvette corvette remix is still out on streaming but the other remix he did for pop on the song takeoff is not anymore so yeah once people started seeing that uzi was no longer rocking with him because of all this allegedly like i said his whole career bro gone because of this whole situation it's pretty crazy i'm sure uzi found that out and was like oh hell nah I'm not with that snitching shit. Another song called Dolly was released at the end of this year too with Tekka and him. Big on my fist. I stay with dirty in my clip. The song was originally an Uzi leak from 2018. There was a clip that went pretty viral of Uzi at a gas station freestyling with a fan too. Uzi's hella cool for that. You know I fuck with the slimes that be the bloods my pockets they fill the well, all types of crips. I got that money on me. Yeah, that bitch wanna fuck with me. Told her don't see it. Yeah, told that bitch wanna be it. I got that man, but I knew it was you, so bitch, I hit the pillow. Uh huh. Yeah. A nigga tell me he trousers and shit. This nigga another instance of uzi just being cool as hell was when a rapper named Just Zeke was filming a music video at a gas station and Uzi just happened to be there and was like, let me get in the video. And that video went viral for him with over 2 million views. Notice how they put Uzi in the thumbnail though. <laughs> I mean, I get it, smart decision. Crazy how something like that, just him being there for five minutes could literally change your whole life. It's pretty incredible. But yeah, in December of 2020, shows were still shut down. So there was a virtual concert, no fans, nothing. 
and Uzi still bodied his performance for over 40 minutes. Oh, and how can I forget another banger of a track that dropped at the end of this year? A song called Bussin' with Doughboy? Uzi bodied his verse, bro. She said you got him too much money. She know my bitch gave a hush money. Now here comes 2021. Shows are starting to open up now, and this is when the pink tape starts to come into the picture. His next studio album. A music video was actually leaked online. It's a loop, and it isn't the full video, but it was called Movie. Bro, I was bumping this loop every day. I still am to this day. To this day! I'm in this shit for life. Remember my life, that shit was trite. I am not no regular, my life is like a movie. Super gas. I'm actually really disappointed that it's not on pink tape because not too long ago he actually previewed it on his Instagram live. And speaking of that video, I know you see the pink diamond. Boy, do we gotta talk about this damn diamond. I'm gonna let my boy Money May, which you should subscribe to by the way, explain to you guys all about it. Now as we all know, Lil Uzi Vert is nowhere near shy of having the limelight on him and it almost seems like Uzi's been going viral for something new consistently since the turn take dropped. But this time it was different. This time Uzi hit global headlines and really shook the internet. I'm talking about when Uzi placed a $24 million 10 karat pink diamond in the dead center of his forehead. On February 3rd, 2021 is the day Uzi broke the internet with him posting a video of him in the studio listening to his feature on YL's song, Off White, which went crazy by the way. And for context, Uzi had to have a special surgery take place to have the diamond made by Eliante sit perfect and has been paying for this gem since 2017. This diamond was a gift and a curse. Of course it broke the internet and was insane, but also came with a price. This diamond seemed to have caused problems for Uzi that could have resulted in his death. Yes, Uzi could have died from this diamond. Uzi went crazy at Rolling Loud Miami 2021 in stage dove. When Uzi dived in the crowd, he said his diamond was yanked from his forehead. What up Uzi? You still got that diamond, brother? Yes. I had a show at Rolling Loud and I jumped in the crowd and they kinda ripped it out. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. I still had a diamond, so I feel good. All right. He had to have a surgery to take it out in a specific way, and if it wasn't, he could have resulted in serious injuries. Since then, Uzi has removed the diamond and has been seen rocking a barbell piercing where the diamond was and also has a scar in the middle of his forehead. This was the story of Lil Uzi Vert's pink diamond. My boy, thank you for taking the time out of your day to be on here, man. I'm really trying to assemble the Avengers on this video, you know. Your boy's trying, bringing the community together. You already know. There was also a song that Uzi dropped this year that pretty much flopped really hard <laughs> it's called demon high a lot of uzi fans didn't really rock with this song and i'm not gonna lie when it came out it felt a little outdated like if this song would have came out like 2018 when the emo wave was really popping it probably would have been more successful but i don't know i don't think the song is that bad actually i think it's a little over hated but i'm gonna let my boy cole frosty let y'all know about this track How's it going everybody? My name is Cole Frosty. I'm just another hip hop YouTuber, just like Aaron, who I want to thank for allowing me to be a part of this documentary. I'm here today to discuss the controversial single, Demon High. See, right before Halloween of 2021, Uzi released what we thought at the time was the lead single to the Pink Tape. Uzi showcased a new sound for himself with Demon High. With its melodic filled chorus, up-tempo beat, Uzi thought that he had a smash pop hit on his hands. Instead, the song received many mixed opinions from fans, one half thinking Uzi's new style was great, and the other half thinking it's his worst song released. For me personally, I think it is a good song that I listen to from time to time, but I wouldn't put it up there next to Money Longer, XO Tour Life, Sauce It Up, or any of other Uzi's biggest hits. Uzi obviously went back to the drawing board with Pink Tape and whipped up a way more successful hit single with Just Wanna Rock a year later in 2022, this leaving Demon High to be Uzi's most controversial single in the past. This was also during the time where we started seeing him and JT from City Girls publicly start dating. And boy, will we get into that. So where are we going right now? Diamond District. In the diamond Diamonds. <laughs> Hi. Let me get dressed. You think like a person like me, I have so much to say, and I really don't.
Now, if I'm not mistaken, the first real big show to open up since the pandemic in terms of a hip hop festival was Rolling Loud Miami. That boy Uzi came out to the song Rage Music, which is now called A, produced by Penny X. Benny X actually commented on the video of his Rolling Loud performance. That's pretty dope. I didn't go to Roll Aloud Miami 2021, but I did go to Roll Aloud New York 2021, and he came out to a bunch of different songs, like 200 My Dash. Uh, I forgot the name of this other song, but he also did A as well, bro. Pfft, craziness. And when I was there in that crowd, sardines fam like i we was wildin uzi was like what am i tell me what i am and let's not forget the cardi performance of a lifetime probably the greatest set in rolling loud history my favorite set of all time that i've ever been a part of Crazy thing is, bro, I had no idea that Cardi even brought Uzi out during it. It wasn't until I got home, my cousin texted me like, boy, you witness history. I'm like, what you mean? I mean, I know the performance was amazing, but what do you mean? He's like, bro, him and Uzi on stage. I'm like, what? I had no idea because it was just so damn dark it was raining and i don't even think uzi's mic was working honestly all the people around me weren't even looking at the stage anyways we were all just kind of focusing on the mosh pits until i saw the live stream i was like wow i was really there like bro i was really there no, I had to let her go, she me. legendary especially when they hugged oh man come on come on fire Now here comes 2022, and now we starting to get a little closer to the pink tape. Almost, not quite though. He was really outside for damn near every festival possible. Something in the water. I'm not gonna lie. Music was a little bit different around that time, and different in a good way. That was like my only competition. Every time I dropped, he dropped, or every time he dropped, I dropped. And he either go number one, or I go number one. Either way it was gonna go, one of was gonna turn it up. So I think you should play some XXX shit. Hey, hey, hey. Summer Smash. <laughs> Wireless. A bunch of rolling louds. Made in America and probably more that I'm missing. And it's kind of crazy to me how during this time, there was a narrative floating around the internet saying how Uzi has fallen off. He doesn't have that star power anymore. He's not what he used to be, this and that. 
and I was finding that crazy. A lot of people were constantly comparing Cardi and his rise to where he's at now with how big the VAMP tour was and how bigger and bigger his performances got. And I get it. He kind of overlapped Uzi in terms of like the internet and like the younger generation because you know recency bias and it's just i don't know the performances were just insane and people were just starting to put cardi over him in terms of popularity and whatnot the dynamic was definitely starting to shift a bit and you could kind of feel it from the comments and what i was hearing from my peers but I always felt like Uzi was cemented as a superstar and could never really fall off. So people saying that, I was like, bro, what are you talking about? That's when he hit us with the Red and White EP. It's definitely one of my favorite projects from him. And this tape seemed to have come out of nowhere with a few older tracks, but some new ones as well. It came out the same day of his Rolling Loud Miami performance. And that was one of my favorite Uzi sets. Cause I was bumping that whole tape driving to the festival. And I just, I don't know, just hearing it live. It was just a breath of fresh air. That set was fire. Final Fantasy to me is one of the most fire theatrical songs to play, especially when you want to end a set. Like that's just a great send off track. And in terms of the falling off narrative, well, we'll get into that when it comes to a certain song that would release that would potentially become arguably his biggest hit yet. Then I saw him again at Made in America, which to me was probably one of my favorite Uzi sets that I've been a part of. And it was in Philly, the way he just jumped up like Rey Mysterio for Glock in my purse. Come on, legendary. With that big ass mohawk like <laughs> what is going on here then i saw him again at rolling loud new york 2022 but to be honest i wasn't too much of a fan of this set because i was on the left side which usually them pits be at but apparently all my 175 homies was on the right side and if you don't know about 175 come on bro shout out 175 y'all going crazy eventually they're gonna have their own festival like i already see it goaded shout out to y'all but most of the people around me was fiending fiending to see Nicki minaj because she was like right after him so everyone around me was like oh my god no please no mosh pits please oh my god oh my god i'm squashed uh, oh my god get me out get me out. like come on bro i was squashed for real for real i was tight i did not have a great i did not have a great experience and Nicki ended up bringing out uzi for her performance which was pretty cool but guess where i was for that Yeah, she was performing at the same time as Cardi. It's not happening, Chief. Sorry, Barbs. But like I said before, in terms of that narrative where Uzi was falling off, when Uzi would drop probably his biggest song of all time in Just Wanna Rock, that song to me is what he tried doing with Futsal Shuffle, but he kind of failed to do it. Like, Futsal Shuffle had a dope video, amazing beat, but 
I don't know. I feel like the dance was a lot more complicated, but Just Wanna Rock is a lot more simple. I feel like it's more catchy. I'm gonna let the impact of this song be known by none other than that boy Hello Yasin. Take it away, my boy. Just Wanna Rock is arguably Lil Uzi Vert's biggest song of all time. And just like the biggest hit before this, EXO Tour Life, it was almost accidental. EXO Tour Life was released as part of Love Is Rage 1.5 which was a loose pack of singles, I believe three of them, released only on SoundCloud. But the song took off so quickly in an organic manner that they would later turn it into a single and put the commercial push behind it. It would peak at number seven on the Hot 100, sitting on the charts for 34 weeks. Even more surprisingly though is Just Wanna Rock, the song started off as a leak, intentional or not, I don't know for sure, but it skyrocketed on TikTok. It makes sense though, this doesn't sound like what an artist who was trying to come up with a hit would make. It sounded like Uzi was having fun in the studio, experimenting and vibing out. But after the hundreds of millions of views the sound was getting on TikTok, it was time to finally release it. And this release was massive. The full song would drop, and soon after a music video was recorded in New York City that would consist of many different popular internet figures, the biggest being Kai Sinat. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Wait, chat. No, we're not only using this as a reaction. Nice little cameo right there. You know what I'm saying? Little, little KC3000. You know, you know what I'm saying? They shut down downtown New York City while filming the music video and fans mobbing the streets. It went viral everywhere, and the song would only skyrocket after. Also, Uzi had his own like signature dance that was going on too that people wanted to imitate. It only spent 32 weeks on the charts and peaked at number 10 in comparison to EXO Tour Life, which peaked higher and lasted on the charts longer. However, one thing about Just Wanna Rock is its widespread reach and appeal. The mainstream, not just mainstream hip hop or music, but the mainstream entertainment industry was way more accepting of promoting this song, platforming it, pushing it. Since it was cleaner and more upbeat, it would even apply to children. Uzi would be invited to perform it at WrestleMania, the Kids Choice Awards, it was used for a DC movie, and it was even used by the Philadelphia Eagles as their walk-in song during the Super Bowl with Lil Uzi Vert bringing them out, which got social media talking bringing up the conversation about whether or not it dethroned the hip-hop Philly anthem prior to this by another Philly native, Dreams and Nightmares intro by Meek Mill. Which shouldn't even be an argument yet, considering how it's been a decade or more since that song has released, and it's been certified a classic track. The Philadelphia Eagles have already played it so many times when coming out at their own games, so it would only make sense that they wanted something fresh, new, and hot at the time that they were playing in the Super Bowl. And for Just Wanna Rock, we still haven't really seen how it holds up over the years in comparison to Meek Mill's Dreams and Nightmares. However, Just Wanna Rock was one of the most important parts of that year because Drake introduced Jersey Club to the mainstream with Honestly Nevermind, and whilst it got a lot of attention, not a single real hit was birthed from it. Drake dropping that album got many people in the industry messing around with that sound, and it was none other than Uzi to take it to the next level and create an actual hit from it which made perfect sense. Uzi was made for a song and a sound like this. He has a very young mentality. He's always bouncy in a metaphorical sense as well as literally he's always moving around. He loves dancing and is very skilled at dancing too. If you guys remember, he even had the song Futsal Shuffle. That was his highest peak song ever, although it tanked quickly after. So it was almost as if this sound was made for Uzi to capitalize on and that he did. This is why he's the GOAT! <laughs> nah, shout out to Hello You See, man. You going crazy. A lot of love, man. Thank you. But let's get to 
Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, Uzi was rocking with he -he a lot this year, bro. <laughs> Being on Yeats Deluxe twice. I don't need no of these niggas, nah, uh. Match on my face like I rock. Yeah. Clap on me over sight, nigga, I play. Let on my way, see, I stay with that lady. I'm sure they got a shit ton of tracks together, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what it is. Take a break and then talk to this shit. Money swallowing like this. Flawless, flawless, flawless. And Uzi at this point is riding the wave of Just Wanna Rock going crazy still. This song was and still is massive at the time of this recording, even performing it at Jimmy Fallon. But there will be another song that will go pretty viral for Uzi this year, which has quite some controversy behind it. Along with another leak that's a grail with some controversy behind it as well. I'ma let my man 1111, which you should subscribe to by the way, explain all about this. So Lil Uzi Vert's first release of 2023 was a song that he never really even planned on dropping. After the original version of Watch This leaked last year with a beat produced by working on dying member Forza, and remember that name for a second, a few months later producer Arizona Tears would remix the track with a new plug and beat type of beat. Arizona Tears posted the song on his SoundCloud and it started quickly gaining traction on TikTok. The remix blew up so much that Atlantic Records would then officially release the track across all streaming platforms, going on to chart in multiple countries. But while Arizona Tears was seeing his dream come true, the song's original producer Forza was seeing his dream get crushed. This shit effing sucks, I hate y'all TikTok people. The effing disrespect Forza posted after being removed from the song. However, there's a little more to the story. Back in 2019, Forza made a huge mistake and leaked multiple unreleased Lil Uzi Vert songs that he had stored on his computer. At the time, 23-year-old Forza was broke and simply decided to get the easiest bag possible. And rightfully so, Uzi was pissed. Forza lucky I ain't F him up like I ain't know he was stealing and selling music. We should have stomped you out. Now, you're probably wondering why didn't Uzi pay him for his beats he recorded on? Well, producers typically don't get paid for their beats until the songs officially drop, and in the case here with Forza, none of his songs with Uzi were out yet. He was likely going to have at least one placement on Eternal A Take, but after selling the songs, Uzi basically cut all ties with Forza, who was also removed from the producer group working on dying. I'm working on dying. However, now almost four years later, it appears that the story could actually have a happy ending. Lil Uzi Vert has been playing his unreleased song of course at basically every recent show he's performed. Of course is another song produced by Forza that leaked and is a fan favorite grail to this day. Along with also telling me in my video that he's quote, cool with Uzi now, I would be very surprised if of course is not on the new album. But a big shout out to Aaron though for letting me be a part of this fire video. What a guy. What a guy, bro. Thank you for recording your part, doing all the editing. All of you guys, actually, man, for doing all that. Fire. I really appreciate you guys. Uzi's performance at Rolling Loud California was so fire, bro. Shout out to my boy John from Everything Colossal for capturing the best footage from that performance. My man was really on stage. Now we gotta get into this whole devil shit that Uzi be on. I spoke about it earlier in the video, which, look, like I said, Uzi been on this type of time and it's no secret, upside down crosses, all the time really, the satanic imagery everywhere, just the stuff he be saying, I'm a P for motherfucking H-E double hockey stick, and how much he loves all that Satan devil shit, especially this performance. He previewed an unreleased track where he mentions how he made a city girl believe in Satan. Bro, when I was in the crowd and I heard him say that, I was like, oh hell where the bibles at fam <laughs> like yo yeah yo how you feel about this man i believe in god i don't know about that <laughs> stuff man that's crazy <laughs> do you feel like he's like taking it too far yeah that's, that one's a little too crazy for me now quick question right if he does hypothetically believe in satan would you advise his city girl girlfriend to kind of like you know run for the hills what do you think i mean i i don't know i just for me i believe in god i'm, I'm very religious came up in the church so anything that has to do with satan i can't rock with um, and you know, one last question. I know it was kind of weird, but do you think he might be a part of the Illuminati since he said that? I don't know. <laughs> Some people saying like, you know, invoking Satan, you know, not cool, that sort of stuff. What do you think about that? Um, 
I don't know. Um, I, I really don't even pay attention to them even saying that because um, I just I just say whatever I want in my songs. It's just like my, my freedom of speech. I come from a real religious household, but I just like me finally living my life and being like, I guess, an adult. I actually kind of just say like, you know, anything I want to say and, you know, I don't, even if I offend people, I don't mean to offend people, but, you know, if they don't like it, they have the option to turn it off. And look, in terms of all that devil shit, to me it's corny. I don't give a sh I think that shit, I don't see the appeal of it, but I always try to separate that stuff from the music. But how do y'all feel about all that imagery and what he be saying about all this devil stuff, like, and the imagery, like, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. And then also, the tongue of Satan, another wow. thing. That's what I like. There was actually supposed to be a pink tape tour that was announced for like March of 2023, which never happened, but Uzi was still outside. So all these festivals acting like Jeff Hardy. So he's chilling. <laughs> I mean, when you weigh like 100 pounds soaking wet, I guess you could get away with constantly doing that. But now nah, these flips are insane, for real. And everyone was smacking his ass like, y'all wildin'. I ain't, gonna, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, but... Yeah, Uzi is way too popular to be doing this, but... That's why I kind of rock with him, though. That's pretty fire. Cardi could never. <coughs> nah, let me stop. <laughs> let me stop. But like I said about the Pink Tape Tour, hold up, hold up. Scratch that. I said all that before they actually announced the Pink Tape Tour. So yeah, he's actually going on tour. He's coming to the Barclays in New York. And I'm not going to lie. I slept, bro. I slept on the pre-sale and all that. So now GA is like 350 or something like that. I don't know. I'm going to try to finesse it. I'm going to try to get some cheap seats, maybe sneak my way down, figure it out. We gonna see. What's good everybody, it's your boy King with an 8 God. First of all, I wanna give a big fat shout out to my boy, it's Aaron speaking for allowing me to come through and drop off this little segment for the Little Uzi Vert documentary. My boy got the hottest documentaries in the game. Tap in when you can, let's get into this. So, I wanna talk a little bit about how our favorite artist, Little Uzi Vert, is gearing up to release the pink tape on June 30th. Not only is he doing that, but the way he's gearing up for this, in my opinion, is just the, the epitome of what you'll get out of Little Uzi Vert. Because one thing that he always does, is he pays respect to the next generation, whether it's a producer or a rapper, even a videographer, if you really tap in, you know what I'm saying? Or even if it's a culture or a style of rap, Little Uzi Vert is going to always tap into the next thing. And just when you think he's tapped in enough and he's done enough, he took it upon himself to shout out some real prolific rappers in the underground. I'm going to specifically spotlight Jace. The other one that we all know and love is Black Cray. But I want to talk about Jace not only because, one, he's a doer. How many rappers you know be on the doer squad? Not a lot of them. 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 Not a lot of them follow through. I'll tell you that, though. This is next up my son of course to one of my most favorite rappers in the underground right now three let's talk about how jace honestly at this point when it comes to who's in the game right now jace is honestly the most deserved for when it comes to the up next conversation if you really want to get into it so little uzi bird takes to instagram live talking to whoever he's talking to and drops off this Really, really thrilling, electrifying snippet. It's some type shit. It's some, it's some type shit. So, to the people who caught on, Little Uzi Vert in that song said two different names like Jace. For those of you who know, Jace is in the process of recreating himself and he used to go as I-A-Y-Z-E and he now goes as J-A-C-E, Jace, the way everybody felt that it should have always been spelt this entire time. Many will say that Little Uzi Vert dropped this bar because he now also identifies as Leslie, but an artist like Little Uzi Vert knows that his acknowledgement towards the next 
best thing is very, very big. So he's very careful with who and what he addresses, if we're not mistaken. I'm not surprised by an artist like Little Uzi Vert catching wind of an artist like Jace being heavily inspired by him. Also, just some more credible information about Little Uzi Vert paying homage to what's going on next. This snippet here was in fact produced by the one and only Ken Carson. So I think it's just an amazing thing to see. Little Uzi Vert took it upon himself to finally announce the pink tape. And he just did it in a very exciting way. Just out of nowhere on live. An amazing snippet, which I also did not like at first. Then I got the chance to listen to it with some good quality speakers. Heard it a few times. Also, what got me to like it was as soon as I found out that he shouted out Jace, I was just like, wow. I can't wait for you guys to see what Jace has to offer to the world next. Can't wait to hear the pink tape. Uh, shout out little Uzi Vert for just being Uzi, man. Hopefully he comes over and taps to my boy, It's Aaron speaking. But until then, it's your boy, Eight God. This is that little Uzi Vert documentary. Shout out my boy, It's Aaron speaking. Holla. And finally, all the pink tape release date rumors would finally come to an end when he would officially drop the trailer for the project on his Instagram. It's a pretty lengthy one too with amazing, and I mean amazing, animation and effects. He even did his own stunts. I'm sure the budget was crazy on this one. Whoa! And finally, on June 30th, 2023, Uzi would drop his long-awaited project, Pink tape. Niggas be forgetting. Goddamn Uzi can rap for real, bro. Yeah. I got you off the white. Nails and wear dresses. How you gonna talk about something, nigga? Thank you. Charles the white made it on the album. Ain't no way. That's but I took that bitch in no Sounds like heavy metal skinhead music. What heavy metal skinhead music. That's what it sounds like. Oh, no. Skinhead music. Oh, no. Ku Klux Klan shit. No. Man. Oh, no. yeah. They're desecrating the American flag with that shit. Ain't no Jimmy Hendrix here. Yeah. Uh, that old bobble. It's all bobble now. <laughs> it's like you take words, you put it in a bottle, and you shake it. Like a milkshake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can't, you can't make nothing of it. Is he vomiting? Yeah. What the fuck is that? In the trash with Yellow Creek. What? Very talented. All the talent I got, I, I never got this fame. Look at this piece of shit. Can I get an interpreter here, please? Oh, man, why am I wasting my time? Oh, and that boy Uzi starting his own label? What? I'm gonna let my man Underground Season let y'all know all about this. What's good, everybody? I'm the Underground Season, and let's talk a little bit about Uzi's new label. And for the record, nothing's 100% confirmed, but for the sake of conversation, just roll with me here. But a little over a week ago, producer Akachi, who's produced a few decent viral hits, announced in a group chat that actually for a little while now, he has been signed to Lil Uzi's XVI label at Warner Bros. And in my opinion, I think this is absolutely huge, in particular for the Underground, so let's talk about it. I'll be honest, I'm surprised that it took Uzi this long to start their own label, but regardless, I'm really excited to hear it. While we've seen a variety of mainstream rappers sign their own artists and start their own labels across the scene, but let's be real here, Uzi is a completely different beast. I mean, the cultural impact, the hits, the shoulder roll, Alright, I'm joking about the shoulder roll, but still. The main reason why I'm so excited about this news is that Uzi starting their own label could be the first realistic competition, the Playboy Cardi's Opium label. I'm sure as a lot of you guys know, Playboy Cardi's artists Ken Carson and Destroy Lonely have absolutely taken over the underground scene in particular in the past two years, with Destroy Lonely even slightly entering the gray area between being a mainstream and an underground artist. And as I've mentioned, while we've seen a variety of other mainstream artists start their own record labels and sign artists, no 
no one has come close to destroy Lonely or Ken Carson. And I'm not counting Sofago. I know he signed the Travis Scott, but Sofago was already an established artist before Cactus Jack. Anyways, I have a feeling that Uzi is probably following a similar strategy to Playboy Cardi and starting their own label. For Opium, Cardi first started out by signing a few producers and then made his way into signing artists, and I have a feeling that Uzi's gonna do the same. It's definitely gonna be after Pink Tape releases, but I'm pretty confident that in the next six months or so, we'll see Uzi sign their first artist. Which then brings up the question, will Uzi's artist be able to take over the underground like Destroy Lonely or Ken Carson? I would like to think that Uzi has a good ear for talent, but at the same time, the underground is a toxic, competitive scene, and if Uzi's artist doesn't come out with something original and something that really hits, the underground is not a forgiving place, and it's gonna be a tough climb back up. But that's all I got for you guys. I'm the underground season. If you like underground hip-hop content, I'm your guy. Also, huge shout out to Aaron for having me on this video. Super cool project he's putting together here. And now my AC went on. God damn. Pink Tape will go on to debut at number one on Billboard, selling 167,000 copies for First week and actually was the first hip hop album in 2023 to go number one. Personally, it's probably my favorite album of the year so far. It's either Pink Tape or Lil Yachty's project. I think that shit is amazing. But yeah, Pink Tape only has like four skips for me. I'm not a big fan of the rock songs like that, nor do I really care for the Nicki Minaj song. But other than that, there's way too many amazing songs that I rock with, man. Honestly, just the first 10 tracks alone has zero skips. None. These tracks alone to me was a better first listen than it was for EA, in my opinion. I still love EA though, but I think Pink Tape is probably better. I think if I had to choose my top 5 favorite tracks, man that's tough. I'd probably go with Died and Came Back, that's probably my favorite. Yeah, I thought that you was what's up with that? Him dissing Roddy Rich is too fire on here too. X2, this shit, this shit cray. Let's go! This shit is too cray. Flooded the face. Bruh, what an intro. It's crazy how that song was supposed to be on Love Is Rage too. Crush him. Crush him, crush him. Yeah, crush him, crush him. Yeah. And Days Come and Go, probably his most personal song yet. And days come and go, but my love won't stay. Oh, and of course, I gotta let my boy Stealthy Season let y'all know how he feels about the future of Uzi's career. Yo, 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 it's your boy Stealthy Season, man. We're back with another video. And today's video, we're going to talk about the future of Pink Tape. And I will predict what I feel like will be happening, you know, from the months and years to come. Because, you know, the, f the album just dropped on Friday, bro. And we're already getting crazy, you know, reviews on this. Like, people are saying this is the worst album that hit, like, his worst body of work. People are saying this is Uzi's whole lot of red. People are saying, like, experimental my ass. Like, the rock songs were ass. In my opinion, bro, like... Like, I just don't know, I don't know how to explain it to you guys. Like, he also even said that this album wasn't made for the basics, bro. Like, this was about to be some crazy shit, so. When it's time for me to put this shit out, I'm out of this world. This shit astronomical. Uh, I'm telling y'all, watch. This shit is not for the basics. I'm not doing nothing basic no more. No basic. Everything, bro. Mr. Fuck your hoe my Gucci slides. Nigga, I'm done. He told you guys before dropping, and, you know. It looks like a lot, half of you guys are not fucking with it, but I can see why they're comparing it to a whole lot of red because like, but at the same time, just because the album is getting, you know, mixed reviews and it's being experimental and people are not fucking with it, you can't say it's just like a whole lot of red. But the reason why I also said it's probably gonna get the same uh, treatment and age right like a whole lot of red is because like, obviously, Uzi just went on tour. Well, he, he's going like on he's going like on these festivals like you know out of uh, the U.S. and he's been performing these songs and they're going crazy, bro. So I already know when he goes on tour. I feel like a lot of people's perspectives and opinions are going to change because, bro, the same thing happened when, when a whole lot of red and when Cardi went on the King Vamp tour, that literally aged the album fucking perfectly, bro, till this day. Like, he, he, like even that Rolling Loud, even though people complain about him still doing the same set, bro, him going on tour for that album was the best thing he could have done, bro. And, you know, that's something that every artist should do, I feel like, because it would be a better experience. It's, you know, it's just better live, bro. Like, that album was made for performing live, and I feel like... Pink Tape was also made to, you know, be performing live. And just like that, bro, 
he goes to perform the album a day after it dropping and he's already going fucking crazy bro like and this tweet right here just proves my whole point of the video like now people are fucking with it after hearing it live so watch how everybody's perspective and opinions are going to change when they get the chance to hear this live bro i'm telling you bro and that's really all i gotta say for this video man and last but not least i gotta let my boy m well yeah. aaron speaks you listen let's go <laughs> let y'all know how he feels about uzi in general and what he means to him yo what up it's your boy m well my boy aaron speaking told me to send him a video of what lil uzi ver means to me bro what lil uzi is, is culturally one of the most important figures like of our generation it's not even like not even like even outside of the music shit I'm talking about the culture and what he means to the youth, what he means to the people, bro. Like he's like he's really the people's champ. And I feel like that's something that's not really talked about enough is um, you know, just who he is as a person too, because he gives off this energy that he's he will always be a kid at heart. Like me, like I'm always gonna be a kid at heart. And that's something I've always resonated with with Uzi. I'm just trying to give off the same energy he does. Cause Uzi is never on some negative shit. Like if you see Uzi you know, um, on video or just, you know, any, anything you see of him on social media, like it's usually like a good, you know, positive vibe. And that's something I'm trying to emulate. Um, but, and like I said too, like we're, we're both kids at heart. And I feel like that's something that we should all have inside of us, man. Cause we're, we're, we're all just some kids trying to have a good time. Um, but I mean, even outside of that, obviously is one of the, the Uzi is one of the biggest staples in rap like ever, but for real, the best part about Uzi is that he's always being himself and he doesn't give a fuck about what anyone says. Like no matter what people online are always saying like, Oh, like he's too old to be acting like this, or he's acting too goofy. He's, he's, he's whatever, bro. Like he's, he's always being himself and he's always pushing others to embrace being themselves. So, uh, that's the message I'm trying to push to. He will always he will always inspire me in that way. And honestly, music is just the enhancement to what he already is. But yeah, shout out Uzi. Pink Tape was fucking amazing. When he goes on tour for that album, bro, cause cause honestly, if y'all really think about it, Uzi was robbed of an eternal a take tour because of COVID. So I'm excited for this album to do well over time because of how good it's gonna be when he performs it. So shout out Uzi and shout out to Aaron speaking too, man. One of the hardest working people in this fucking industry, in this fucking game, Aaron speaking. When Aaron speaks, you listen. Shout out Aaron. I fuck with you, bro. I love you, dog. Appreciate you always. Love you. Hey, you the people's champ too, bro. Don't forget, man. The work ethic you have is insane. Fucking crazy. We mosh pitting. We mosh pitting. We are mosh Ken Carson, Uzi, bro. Everything happened, bro. If you can, get the fuck out. Cactus Kish! What the heck? Cactus Kish! Hey, put that shit for me. Uzi did a set at Gov Bowl this year, and he brought out Destroy Lonely and Ken Carson. Fire Cosign. People are saying that he's doing more for Cardi <laughs> than he ever did, but he even did an interview with Montreality and called Destroy Lonely and Ken Carson to come over. Shout out Ken Carson. Shout out Destroy Lonely. This is the only time you will see the vamps. Link with the wolves, nigga, this is how we do it. So clearly he's rocking with them young boys. So, remember when I mentioned him and JT? Well, at the BET Awards, things didn't go too well for Uzi. 
He previewed a new track at the time, which would be called Spin Again, and in the track he says, she got a love bro. She did like ice spice. Bruh, JT was not feeling that bro, <laughs> like at all. Making a whole scene in front of everybody. But yeah, enough of the gossip. Not too long after Pink Tape dropped, I think it was just like a day or two after, he ends up putting Love Is Rage 3 in his story and his bio. Like what? Uzi knows how to really get the fans excited for his work, man. Don't even get me started on 1629 though. I don't know if that's ever gonna drop. But he did put this on his story this year with some demonic ass shit, talking about we gonna take over the world. I don't know, man. But yeah, about Love Is Rage 3. What about Love Is Rage 3? Oh yeah, that's coming. Um. Not too long, probably, like, honestly, I know I used to be lying, but a couple months. Personally, I was like, wait, what? Come on, man, Pink Tape just dropped. Like, let us digest this food first, bro, before giving us a whole nother full course meal. And on top of that, Uzi is out here looking like Thug from 2015, with the blonde dreads, the red bandana, gearing up to drop Barter 16? That's crazy. I never would have expected this. I love the homage to Thug, though. I see him in the studio with DJ Khaled too? Bruh, 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 bruh. No, please don't. <laughs> like, I got love for Khaled. He's a dope person, he's funny, and he really knows how to motivate people, but come on. He's the ultimate yes man. He will tell you every single song you show him like it's gonna be the biggest song of the century. It touches your soul and your emotions. So... I don't know how I feel about that, bro. Him being in a studio with Khaled? I don't know, but let's see how Barter 16 ends up being. Maybe it's a little teaser, a little appetite, you know, a little EP or whatever before we get Love is Rage 3, which I'm hoping that all those songs like Movie or, uh, what is it, 200 My Dad, I don't know, all these other leaks end up on that on top of new songs, so we'll see. But yeah, man, Lil Uzi Vert. What else can I really say? That boy been grinding for years now at least a decade and is truly certified as an absolute legend in this game when he first came out a lot of old heads wasn't rocking with him it was weird it was new it was different and now it's like you you gotta respect it you gotta respect it man so who knows where his career is gonna go man in five ten years who knows what he'd be doing who knows what kind of music he'll be making or what kind of ventures he'll enter who knows man what i do know though is that he's goaded oh yeah and if you like this video hit that like button subscribe to your boy leave a comment let's get it